Hey, I'm Marty from Spring Ahead Media Solutions, and today I'm going to be going over with you how to make an email template. Um, with an email template, we're gonna set all of the defaults for your email, so all of the fonts and colors and your social media links. If you're new to making emails in MailChimp, or if the way that you've been doing it has been taking like a tremendous amount of time because you're starting from scratch every time, what you need is a template, so let's do it. All right, let's jump right in. This is my main screen here. And we're going to start with this at this little megaphone. That's all of our campaigns, all of our emails will live here. And we're gonna go to email templates. We're just gonna head right over here to create a template on the right hand side. MailChimp gives us a ton of options as far as this goes. Um, but I love starting from scratch. So my favorite template starting place is this basic one, one column basic. We are creating this template in what MailChimp calls their classic builder. Their classic builder works a couple different ways. First of all, the content of your email is going to be broken up into these blocks that you see on the right-hand side here. Some are text, some are images. And then the email itself is, if you click on the style tab, this is where we're gonna set our defaults. The email is, is broken up into different sections. So we're gonna go through them one by one and we're gonna set all of our defaults for our email. The first one is page. This sets this like outside color. Right now it's like a light gray. This outside color shows up when someone is reading your email on a desktop with like a wider screen. But if they're looking on their phone, it's gonna show up almost not at all. I'm gonna leave it this light gray color. And then the next thing we're going to change are our fonts and our colors. Um, it will default to Arial font, which is totally fine. But you'll see that there's a whole variety of other fonts in here. Um, I'm going to go with Roboto today. That is just my current favorite. It could be that the font that your company uses for their branding is not available in here. That's because not all email systems are able to see all fonts. So the ones that are in here can be read by most email systems. In the page settings, we're going to be setting up our headings. So the headings are like this large text that's right here. Um, it's time to design your email. And heading one is the largest of those. So I've changed my font to that Roboto. And now on my web page, one of my um, colors that I use is this kind of bold pink color. So I'm going to, you'll see it just changed over there. I'm going to make my headers that color. If you click on this color icon here, it'll actually give you the whole color wheel if you wanna pick something there. I'm gonna keep it as bold. And I actually like my first headers, those big ones to be centered personal preference. I'm gonna go ahead and do the next one. I'm gonna switch my font. I like having consistent fonts throughout my email. And for number two, I'm also gonna make it that pink color. Um, but on this one, I'm gonna keep it on the left-hand side, the alignment. For three, I'm gonna fix the font. But I'm gonna leave it this 202020 is like an almost black color. I like that, it's gonna match the color of the rest of the text in my emails. And then, Roboto on this one as well. And you can click save here. We're gonna do our next one. Pre-header is this section right up here. Right now the background of it is matching the rest of the surround and I like that. If you are doing something like an email that has a coupon code, um, sometimes it's nice to have like a bold color up there and you would change that color right here in the background. You put your coupon code right up at the top. The header section is where my logo is. Um, this logo I have set as my default logo, which is why it filled in automatically. If I wanted a color behind that logo, I would pick it here. I'm gonna keep it white for today. And let me show you where I put this logo. So if we wanted to change it out, or if you have nothing there and you need to put something there, you're going to go to replace. This is all of the images that I've already uploaded in my content studio. Um, and if you wanted to set your default logo, you would do it over here on the left where it says my logo. You would upload it right to there. Otherwise, all of your things you've uploaded are here. And then you would just click on what you want and click insert. Now that this is an image, I can drag this to make it the size that I like. And don't forget to add a link to your logo. If someone clicks on your logo, it should go right to your web page. So you would just do that here. And I've added my logo, I mean my link to my logo. All right, let's see what's next. Next is the body of my email. So that is the center section here. The body of my email is currently white, all Fs mean white. I'm gonna keep it that way. 
but I need to fix my fonts here. So again, I'm switching Arial to Roboto. You always want to keep it at least 16 point font. That's the smallest that we recommend you go with. Um, again, people don't spend a lot of time reading their emails. They need to be able to skim it easily. And so that's why we recommend 16 point font. Also people are reading it on their phones. So keeping it a good size really helps out. I'm keeping that same color, but my body links, this um, teal color is always the default. This is a really easy way to make your email a custom is to switch that to whatever your branding color is. So I'm adding it to be that pink. And then the links, I have them here, they're set to be underlined. You could also make them bold if you wanted. Uh, I'm just gonna leave them as underlined today. The next section is our footer. That is down here where all of our legal information lives. Um, for now, I'm gonna keep it the same color as everything else. Sometimes it's nice to make it a bold color. And again, we're, I'm just gonna fix my font. And I'm going to make my links that bold color again. Um, the things that live in your footer here that for legal reasons are a copyright, um, MailChimp will automatically put in the year of the current year and the company name that you have in your default settings. FCC anti-spam regulations um, say that you need a physical mailing address at the bottom of your emails. Um, so that again will fill in from your defaults or you could type it in here if you want to. And then you also need an unsubscribe link. Um, it's really important that people are able to unsubscribe from your emails. You don't wanna be emailing people who don't want to hear from you. If you're interested in learning more about uh, the legalities of what needs to be here in the US and outside of the US, I'll leave a link for you in the notes below. Okay, and then the last thing, oh no, let's keep going through this, these sections. So mobile styles is how things will show up in mobile if they are going to be um, a bit different than they are here. And then this referral badge, if you are using um, a MailChimp free account, um, you will need to include one of these badges at the bottom of your email. You can pick which one. If you are paying for MailChimp, then you can turn this off. And then I'm gonna address these little social buttons here. You can fix these any way you want, but doing it in your template means that you don't have to redo it every time you send an email. So go ahead and put this in here. There we go. And then to change the look of these, that is over on the settings here. Um, you can change what color your buttons are. You can make them outline buttons. These days I've actually been putting uh, the links and text in here to go to your web page. You can have an email link in here so people can email you. And again, you're setting that up just like once and forget it. So those are all of the defaults for your emails. And then whatever is the content of your email is maybe what you'll adjust as you send emails out. I'm gonna to touch on a couple of these blocks over here that I think are, are important. The most important one I would say is actually this divider one. This puts space in between the things in your email. It defaults to align like that. You can switch that to none and just have it be space. And this padding pixels here are how big the space is. So you can make this even smaller or you can make it even bigger whatever looks best to your eye. Then you may want to put an image here. Again, you would just go, you can upload your images into here or you can take something that you already have, change the image size. You may not need to do this in your template, right? You may be changing things for every email that you do and now you've already set up your default, so it's fine but I figured I would just put something in here. And I actually like to put my headings in their own line. This is a heading. I think it makes it easier in the future. And under styles is where you would find those default headings that we made. Just does it right for you and the colors and the size that you like. This is good. I, I deleted out that original text box. I'm putting a new one in. So this is our text box. We'll write something about what we have to say. And then a button. If you're curious about email design, 
Um, there's a website called Really Good Emails that has suggestions. And if you're new to email marketing, um, sign up for my newsletter and I will send you a PDF of all of the kind of links to resources that I think are really helpful when you're doing email marketing. So if I'm doing a blog post, I would write read more here and a link. For the style of your buttons, if you have a call to action and you want people to do something, I would absolutely recommend having a button here. Oh, I'm gonna make it that pink color again, just so that it'll stand out, because that's always the goal. Oh, I made it disappear, didn't I? There we go. And under style, you could put a border around it if you wanted to. I'm going to do a little black border on it. This is a one pixel border. It's very small. Maybe I'll switch it to two. Round edges or knots. I'm going to go knot. And then the other trick that I use for buttons is, oh, I got to fix my font again, is for the spacing. I'm going to make the letters a little bit further apart. Just like that. Spacing one pixel. Okay. So that there is kind of the basics of a template. If you want to see how it looks, you're going to go up here to preview, preview mode. You can see it on desktop, which is how you've been looking at it but also make sure that you double check things in mobile, make sure they look good on a phone. At least 40% of people are reading emails on their phones and you know your client, they might be doing it more. And then if you'd like to see it for real, you can send yourself a test email right here. So now I'm gonna go ahead and save it as a template. New template. Well, and there it is. Now it's living in our email templates. When you go to create a campaign, you will create a new email, and when you go to design it, there'll be a little tab that says Save Templates, and that's where this will be. Well, I hope that that helped answer all of your questions on how to create a template. I can't wait to see what you guys are up to in real life, and I hope that this saves you a ton of time. Um, if you have questions about how to use this in a campaign or how to anything, really, um, I have tutorials about everything. I'll list some of them here, and if you have questions, go ahead and ask them in the comments, but I'll see you around. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. That's how you make a video.